Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create SVG animations using CSS. Now, these are using an inline SVG, which we've shown you before that you can affect with CSS. However, this time we're going to be animating the stroke and the fill to look like the SVG is drawing onto the screen. It's a really cool effect, and it's super easy to do. So check it out. Let's get started right now. So to give you a brief introduction, the effect that we're going to be creating, uh, you'll see when I click this toggle box, is this check mark, which is an SVG check mark, is going to draw on and then fill in itself. So if we click toggle, you can see it draws in fully and then, uh, then the background fades in and then the reverse happens where the background goes transparent and then uh, undraws itself whenever we click toggle. Now this animation is happening simply because of a CSS class change. So if you come and look at our CSS, I'm really just adding this uh, class of checked to the SVG itself and that's triggering the second state and that's using transitions to draw this on. Now let's take a look at our HTML so we can recreate this so you can understand what's going on. So in our HTML, um, I'm just using Angular in here to just do a quick toggle, um, no reason in particular. So you can ignore any of this uh, ng init stuff. The button is just um, changing the state from checked to unchecked. I'm using ng class to just drop in a checked class if that value is true. Um, the real important part is that we have an inline SVG here. Um, the size is just 200 by 200 and we have a single path which is this check mark. So we have a single path here and here are the dimensions and that path creates this, uh, this check line here. Now in terms of CSS properties in the checked state um, now that we don't need to see this HTML anymore. In the check state, we have a fill of white and we have this stroke dash offset. So this is actually where the magic is happening. The reason we have an animation at all is, is because we're animating the stroke itself and we have a stroke width of one pixel. So if we can say red, and now let's toggle this back you can see what's actually animating is this red line. And this red line is the stroke itself. So let's go ahead and get rid of some of this stuff here. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this stroke dash array, stroke dash offset and transition. I'm gonna delete it from here as well. And I'm gonna delete this offset. So now we just have two states. We have a state with a stroke red, a width of one pixel for the stroke, and a transparent center. And the check state is the same, just with a white center. So as you can see, it's just changing the background or the fill of this SVG shape. Now, the way this works is essentially we're making a dashed line. Um, and what we're doing is then we're offsetting the dashed line by a certain value and that's what's causing it to draw in. So to make this have some, you know, make a little bit more sense here, if we come here, we can type, type stroke hyphen dash array. And now let's just give this some pixel value. We can say 10 pixels and save this. Okay, so now what you get here is you can see that we have a dash line and it's consisting of 10 pixel in increments. So we do 10 pixels on, 10 pixels off. So how else we, could we do this if we have stroke dash array? We could say stroke dash array 10, five. Now we have 10 on, five off, 10 on, five off, 10 on, five off, 10 on, five off, until of course they uh, combine here at the start and end. Um, we, only, we don't necessarily want that. We really just want an on off situation. Now another value that we had was the stroke dash offset. Now the stroke dash offset is really just changing where this stroke on and off starts. So if we come here and type stroke dash offset like so and have this set to 10 pixels, we save this. 
you can see nothing's changed. And you might wonder why nothing's changed. It's because we had 10 on, 10 off, 10 on, 10 off. Uh, so of course, if we move it by 10 pixels, it's, it's not going to really modify that much. So if we say five, you'll get a little bit of a difference here where we have things shifted over a little bit. In fact, let's go ahead and add a range slider here. So I'm just going to add an input and the type is going to be range. And the min is going to be equal to zero. The max is going to be equal to say 40. And we're gonna have an ng model is equal to range. Now let's go ahead on this path. Let's go ahead and add a style equals. And in the style equals, we can use our stroke dash offset here to animate this. So we can see exactly what's going on. So if we say stroke dash offset colon, and then we can go ahead and use the property in here, which was just range and finish it off with picks right here. Let's go ahead and just delete this stroke dash offset. Now, this is gonna be where we understand a little bit of what's going on. Actually, let's animate uh, this, uh, or let's actually paste out this range value here too. So we can see this, what's going on here. I'm just gonna throw this in as like an H2 or something so you can see it. And we'll put this in pixels. Okay, so now when we're moving this, you can see as we're bumping this along at zero pixels, it's at its initial state, and as we're changing this offset, it's essentially just pushing the uh, dash along here. And let's come to our stroke dash array. Let's bump this up to something like 40. So now that it's at 40, as we push it along, you'll see we have less and less of lines and gaps because as this is getting uh, greater and greater, um, the gaps and lines are no longer able to uh, completely happen because of the distance that it needs to travel. So how do we get this to the state where it needs to animate on? We need it so that the gaps and the length are the same length as the SVG's entire stroke path. So how do we figure that out? Well, we can actually figure that out pretty easily with JavaScript. I'm gonna open this up in the debug so I can access the inspect element of this. And I'm leaving this toggled so I can identify this by um, the class name checked. So in here we can use the JavaScript console to type var path is equal to document and then dot query selector. And then we're going to have parentheses, quotes, period, and then now we're gonna look for checked. Now inside of this path, now inside of uh, checked, we're gonna look for path, which is this uh, path here we're actually trying to find the length of. So we can do space path, then single quote and parentheses semicolon, enter. Now we have path stored in here. We can use a method and we can say path period and then get total length parentheses and then we can go ahead and hit enter. Now what this has given us is the total length in pixels of the stroke path. So let's come back out of the debug view to the normal view and I've copied and pasted that value in here. So now in our stroke dash array, we can paste this in here and just throw picks at the end of it. And what you'll notice here is that we have this line. And as we change the offset, it's drawing and undrawing uh, this object here. Now here's where it's really cool. If we wanna show this to draw off, we're going from this full on state to zero, right? We're going from what's most likely 99 pixels. Actually, let's see that in action just by having this set to 100 pixels, uh, the range max and min. And as you can see, it's drawing on this way. So let's actually stop using this range and let's start using our normal CSS. And we can type stroke dash offset is going to be equal to negative 99.47 pixels, save. Okay, 
So now this is the default on state is going to be having the dash offset set to a negative version of all this stuff. And I just need to refresh because it was uh, using the range value still here. So I refresh and you can see that extra little bit of red is gone. Now when I click toggle, we just get the white. So to get it to toggle on under checked, checked, on the checked class path, we can say stroke dash offset, and we can set this to zero, zero pixels, and have the semicolon there. Now when we toggle, you can see it's toggling completely. Now what's great about this is you can transition this with CSS. So let's go ahead and uh, do this transition. So we can say transition, and we're gonna to wanna to transition the fill and the stroke differently because we want the stroke to complete before the fill comes in. So it looks like the stroke goes and then the fill. So we can say, uh, first we want to animate the stroke uh, hyphen dash offset. I'm gonna paste this in here because I don't wanna type this all out. We can say, this is gonna take place in 0 0.3 seconds and this is gonna be linear. And now we want to then have the fill transition in over 0.2 seconds and we want this to ease and we want this to actually be delayed by 0.3 seconds. Okay, so now we save this and you can see we draw on, it fades in. Some of those fades are a little too fast for me. That drawing's a little fast. I'm bumping everything to, we got five seconds for the offset now and four seconds for the fill delete that, save this, and let's see it in action, draws on, great. Now the only difference is, is we want this to happen in reverse on the way out. So uh, we want the fill to go first and then the stroke to be delayed. Now what we can do is copy this transition. We'll throw this on the check state because this is going to stay the same. And now the unchecked state is just simply gonna get a swapping of these delays here. We're gonna take the delay off of the fill, throw the delay onto the stroke dash offset and set it to 0.04 seconds to accommodate for the time of the fill. Now when we toggle on, draws on, fills in. We toggle off, fills out, draws off. And we can go back to setting our stroke to white here and we're going to have a really nice looking checkbox. And I mean, how much more appealing is that to see on a website if you have the animation going quickly and not too distracting? Um, that's way more appealing to view than let's say uh, just a check mark just randomly appearing or even fading in. This sort of transition looks way more um, interesting and a little bit more inviting to the user. Cool, so this is how you animate SVG strokes using stroke dash offset and the stroke dash array. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video, or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.